Hi, welcome back to Cooking with the Cripple. I'm your host, the Cripple. Today we're going to be doing, instead of a five minute meal, we're going to be doing a five minute snack. Because last time we did, um, I believe it was just like pork chops and stuff like that. This time we're going to be doing deviled eggs and pea dip and all that kind of stuff that you would normally do. And to start, you need um, cold water and I'd say about an inch for visual people, that's about that much, um, above the top of the eggs. And you want it in a single layer. You don't want eggs on top of eggs because they don't cook properly and it just turns into a big mess. So I've already added in about a dozen eggs. And so we're just gonna bring this up to a boil, but first we gotta add in the salt. So I add in about I don't like the salt shaker. There we go. That much. You're, it, it varies on what kind of salt shaker you have and all what how salty you want it. So it doesn't really matter on that. So first you're going to bring this to a boil. And then uh, as you can tell, I'm not at my house. But that's okay. I'm at my grandma's house. And then we're going to put these eggs in really fast before it actually starts heating up. But these are just the rest of the eggs. Come on. And you want to do this as gently as possible because that's not hard boiling, that's poaching. If you shatter them. And so we're going to let this come to a boil. And then we will be cooking. But we will see you. Oh, wait, that's not mine. Uh, that's not garbage. Um, cleanup is always key when you're cooking because otherwise your kitchen looks like a pigsty. So you always want to clean up as you go because otherwise it builds up on you and builds up on you and builds up on you. But I will see you guys when this comes to a boil and yeah, we'll see you when we get there. Okay, we're back and it is boiling beautifully and all we're really going to do now is just shut it off and we're going to set a timer for 12 minutes exactly and so I'm setting the timer for 12 minutes and once that goes off we're going to come back and take them out and put them in a ice bath or ice, ice bath so we will be back but while we're doing that we're going to go over and make some um, pea dip while we're doing that. So I will be right back. I have to set it up for a minute. We'll be right back. Okay, now we're going to start with straining our sweet peas. And you don't really want um, green beans because those don't taste good for this particular recipe. So you want the sweet peas or the green peas. That's the word I was looking for, sorry. But you want sweet, so We'll put those in there, and then I'll grab this other one. I, I like to go big on my batches, because go big or go home. And oh, put that on there. And then make, the, make sure they're nice and strained. And then, come on now. There we go. And then you really only need two ingredients for this particular kind of dip, unless you count the potato chips as part of the ingredients. But here we go. And then I'd say, huh. well, depending on how much you like mayo, it depends on how much you put into it. But I really like mayo, so I'm going to put a lot of it in there. So this might take a little while. Salad dressing, sorry. Salad dressing, I say mayo. Some people say salad dressing. But. Okay, so, hurry up. One more and that, that's enough. And, ah. There we go. I need that. 
Good thing I did not touch. And then you're gonna mix them up, and this is, this is, um, pea dip. Make sure to still be gentle with them, because you don't want crushed up pea dip. I don't think that tastes as good as regular pea dip. But, here we go. Um, my mother made this when we were very young, so I always thought that it was some special recipe when I was younger. I thought that it included like seven or eight different like spices and stuff, so I never bothered asking her about it because I didn't, I didn't care to learn it. Whenever she made it, I was happy. But this was, this is a recipe from my childhood, so if you guys want to, you can feed this this is a good way to get your children to enjoy their vegetables. And then all you need next is just some potato chips. And you get open bag first. Yeah, there we go. It might break. Yep, it broke. <laughs> That's okay. I just washed my hands. Washing your hands in the kitchen is key. That's okay. Mm. Okay, we're back. And we've let this sit about 12 minutes. So we're gonna move this over to a heat pad because I need to, oh, we're also gonna turn the time off otherwise that would get really annoying. But there we go. Timer is off, and here we go. Wow, that's kind of heavy. Oh. But, does this have a little loop thing, or? Oh, that works perfect. But I just need to be very careful. Carefulness is key in the kitchen. So, we're gonna transfer. I might need some assistance, but yeah, I think I'm going to need some assistance, so I will take over. But my mother is just going to do it, and guess I still cook with my mother. But we're just going to dump out the hotness. Yep, dumped out the hotness, and then... Oh, and then we need to give it a, a quick bath. A quick pre-bath, I should say. And then... Uh, oh. And we're going to let this run until it's filled up and it's safe enough to be able to touch, but I think I'm still going to use a utensil just in case. You always want to be safe. And... And then... Um, that's about good. But, it could always be colder, so that's good. Okay, we, we've got our ice bath over here, and we're just going to put them in the... We're going to basically set them, I think, right? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going through mental notes, but we're just going to quickly set them in there, and that basically finishes up the cooking time. And... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm concentrating on what I'm doing, so if I'm not as talkative as I usually am, that's okay. Oh, that's good. You always want to check to make sure, though, because just in case. Sorry, little buddy. But we're going to give them, oh, we might need another container because, actually, I've got an idea, just, ah, it's overflowing. <laughs> we had a little overflow incident happen in the kitchen, oops. But I think that 
Just five more won't cause it to overflow anymore. And then we're done for right now. And then, oh, yeah. We'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I've, I've taken an egg and because you have to test throughout the cooking process, you have to test whether or not the stuff is done. And you, as you can tell, this is perfectly done. So right now I'm going to crack it. Everybody has their own cracking style. There is no professional way to do it. There's just the way to get it done. So I like to use my thumb a lot and just get it all crinkly. And then it just peels off like, oh, <laughs> it peels off really easy. It peels off like a sheet, kind of, except this one being difficult. <laughs> and so these are really simple and really easy and just, it takes a lot of patience and practice. That's all cooking really is, is just practice, practice, practice. So I've been cooking for, I don't know, it feels like my whole life because I've been cooking with, like I'd peek in when my mother was making something and watch her. And then I would come in and help. And she would teach me little tips and tricks on how to become a better cook, so to speak. And just, um, cooking is very, what is the word I'm looking for? It's, there's no scientific way to do it you're going to have some variables. So don't feel bad if you can't peel as fast as the next person or you can't dice up an onion as fast as the next person. That person's just better at that place or, ah! I should probably stop talking with my hands <laughs> if I've got something in my hands. But this is an example of a peeled egg. Yeah, it looks a little, little, um, ugly, but that's okay. It's what's on the inside that counts. But we will be right back. We're going to take a minute to peel all these eggs. So we'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, so we've cut up all of our eggs and we've separated the yolks. These are golden brown, as you can see on the outside. That are not golden brown. These are golden. I'm sorry, I'm bad with my words sometimes. But these are golden on the outside as well as on the inside. If you have that kind of greenish gray film on the outside then you've cooked them too long and these are exactly perfect so these are this is what you want when you're cooking um hard boiled eggs and you get three ingredient or three recipes out of this you can have them hard boiled eggs um egg salad or deviled eggs so you get three in one so this is really a three in one um recipe so i will be right back i'm going to do my other ingredients Okay, so I've mashed up my um, egg yolks. I did say I was going to add my other ingredients, but I forgot you have to mash them up first because otherwise you just got eggs. But, so I've been mashing and right here we have one half teaspoon of yellow mustard and one teaspoon of paprika. And we're just gonna throw that in. And then we're going to mix it up a little bit. Just mix it around, and then we're going to add in, if it'll scoop, about one, sorry for the bang, but one, let's see how that goes first. And then, I think I'll need two, so... break it. I didn't break it. But I think that should do it, but we shall see. But oh, and sometimes I sorry, I glanced over and I saw that I forgot a key ingredient. Sometimes I like to add in some pickle juice. This is what is it? It is one fourth cup, but we'll see how much I use. I wish it would go out straight so I can see how much I'm pouring out. But we'll see um, if the consistency is correct. These are the best. Um, these are the best. I think I might need to add a little bit more mayo. These are the best uh, ground up ones that I've ever had. 
And if you have, if you work with glassware, this is this is a trick that I do so that I don't shatter the glass. You just use your finger as the rim of the bowl. And I think that's perfect. We just need to mix up. And I think we're gonna need to add the rest of the uh Why is that we're not coming? Pickle juice. There we go. I'm sorry folks, I'm having difficulties tonight apparently. But hmm, we could we could stand to add a little bit more. Just a little dribble. And then I think that's about not it's not one fourth, so it's about three fourths of the one fourth cup, so you guys do the math on that one. But you can have here we go. Let's see how this bad boy tastes. Hmm. Ooh. I can taste that mustard. But this is actually perfect. So once once we do that, we once we do that, get all that out of there. And then you're gonna wanna take one of your whites. You, you're you gonna wanna save these, so save your whites. Oh, I'm sure you've had devil, devil eggs before, so. But you take a small devil, and then, might be too big. Too big. There we go. Small dollop, and then add some bacon bits. Because you could always use some bacon bits. Always. Uh, and there we go. That's a good deviled egg. Mmm. But this has been Cooking with a Cripple. I'm your host, and I will see you guys next time.